Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, February 28, 2020. The parasitoids are at it again. It's time to redefine the ruling class and their minions. They're really not parasites, because although parasites do live off their prey, they generally don't kill their hosts. These people are actually parasitoids. Those are organisms that suck the lifeblood from their hosts and eventually kill them. The parasitoid ruling class and their minions demand that we work hard to produce so they can confiscate what they want and eventually they will kill our spirit and our drive to succeed. Why work hard if they let you keep less and less? Now there are some people in Congress who see a problem and want to do something to help. Now this is commendable even if we don't always agree with their solutions. However, these good members quickly learn that they can do their good only if they conform to the rules set down by the parasitoid ruling class. If you're not willing to obey the rules, then you have no chance to pass any legislation. Let's look at the Small Business Startup Savings Act. An example of members trying to help resolve a problem is the bill co-sponsored by Senators Cory Gardner and Gary Peters that would allow small businesses to create tax-deductible startup savings accounts. Congress.gov provides this summary of the bill. This bill allows an individual or eligible small business, one with 500 or fewer employees, to establish a small business startup savings account. The taxpayer may deduct contributions to such startup accounts in the amount of $10,000 or $150,000 reduced by the aggregate contributions for all taxable years, whichever is the lesser amount. Qualified distributions, such as for purchase of equipment, marketing, training, or accounting fees from such accounts, are excluded from gross income for income tax purposes. The Small Business Administration provides this information about small businesses. Small businesses are defined as businesses with fewer than 500 employees. They comprise 99.9% of all businesses, 99.7% of businesses with paid employees, and they comprise 97.6% of exporting businesses. Small businesses employ 47.5% of all private sector employees. 80% or 2.3 million small businesses have no employees. Small businesses generate more than two-thirds of the net new jobs. About half of all small businesses survive for five years or longer, and many use personal and family resources to finance their startup or expansion, and many have trouble raising startup and expansion money. Now, who could possibly object to helping small business owners and people who want to start the next Microsoft or Apple? Now, remember, the ruling class has decreed that any income tax benefit must have the following requirements and characteristics. Recipients must believe that they are getting a special benefit that others aren't getting. Recipients must know that they have to keep Congress happy if they want to keep their benefit. Recipients must comply with complex rules and understand that they will be punished if these rules are violated. Recipients must know that their benefits are not permanent but come with an expiration date. Now that means that recipients will have to pay lobbyists to renew their benefits multiple times, not just once. And recipients must think that they are saving the amount set aside. The legislation introduced by Senators Gardner and Peters meets the requirements of the parasitoid ruling class, so it may actually have a chance to be enacted. However, it's just another example of why we need to replace the federal income payroll tax system with the fair tax. Now let's look at the real solution, the fair tax. Now unless they believe it's right to allow a small group of parasitoids to enrich themselves at our expense, a small business owner will want a solution that has the following requirements and characteristics. The business owner is the person who decides if he needs to set money aside for his business, not bureaucrats. The business owner does not have to comply with complex requirements, and if the owner didn't spend the money, he would keep it in the business and the business owner would be free to spend the money in whatever way he deems is best for his business, not the way some bureaucrat said was okay. 
The fair tax checks off all of those points and will provide even more benefits to small businesses than the bill proposed by the senators and endorsed by the parasitoid ruling class. In conclusion, some of our fellow citizens seem to have become more apathetic and believe that fighting the ruling class and their minions is just too much work and that there's no way they can win. Others believe that even if they do stand up and object, that the ruling class will tell their minions in Congress to sound sympathetic but do nothing to address their problems. Yes, being free and self-determined does require much more effort than just doing what you're told. There's a risk that if you offend the parasitoid ruling class, they'll try to punish you for the impudence of questioning their superior intelligence. In common sense, Thomas Paine said, those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. The truth is that these parasitoids number at most in the tens of thousands. We number in the tens of millions. If we stand up and say no more, what are they going to do? <laughs> They'll run like the cowards they are. It's time to take back control of our income and our lives and demand a sane tax system to fund the federal government. The fair tax raises revenue for the government in the simplest and most transparent manner possible. It provides the prebate tax credit to all legal households based on household size and actually allows lower and middle income families to have significantly more money to spend than they have now. The fair tax allows American businesses to be more competitive in the world market and for U.S. prices to be reduced by at least 10%. The fair tax greatly reduces the ability of Congress and lobbyists to extort money by selling tax favors, makes it much harder to single out certain groups and threaten to raise their taxes if they don't behave. With the fair tax, there is only one rate and any increase would apply to everyone. The fair tax will grow the economy at a rapid rate, will create and protect American jobs and workers, and ensures the sustainability of Social Security and Medicare, and takes away the ruling class's ability to control seniors. Demand that Congress pass the fair tax, the only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org.